Susanna. There was a man living in Babylon whose name was Joachim. He married the daughter of Hilkiah, named Susanna, a very beautiful woman and one who feared the Lord. Her parents were righteous and had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and had a fine garden adjoining his house. The Jews used to come to him because he was the most honored of them all. That year two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them the Lord had said, Wickedness came forth from Babylon, from elders who were judges, who were supposed to govern the people. These men were frequently at Joachim's house, and all who had a case to be tried came to them there. When the people left at noon, Susanna would go into her husband's garden to walk. Every day the two elders used to see her going in and walking about, and they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences and turned away their eyes from looking to heaven or remembering their duty to administer justice. Both were overwhelmed with passion for her, but they did not tell each other of their distress, for they were ashamed to disclose their lustful desire to seduce her. Day after day they watched eagerly to see her. One day they said to each other, "'Let us go home, for it is time for lunch.' So they both left and parted from each other. But turning back, they met again, and when each pressed the other for the reason, they confessed their lust. Then together they arranged for a time when they could find her alone. Once, while they were watching for an opportune day, she went in as before with only two maids, and wished to bathe in the garden, for it was a hot day. No one was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. She said to her maids, "'Bring me olive oil and ointments, and shut the garden doors so that I can bathe.' They did as she told them. They shut the doors of the garden, and went out by the side doors to bring what they had been commanded. They did not see the elders, because they were hiding. When the maids had gone out, the two elders got up and ran to her. They said, "'Look, the garden doors are shut, and no one can see us.' We are burning with desire for you, so give your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you, and this was why you sent your maids away. Susanna groaned and said, I am completely trapped, for if I do this, it will mean death for me. If I do not, I cannot escape your hands. I choose not to do it. I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and the two elders shouted against her, and one of them ran and opened the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the shouting in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. And when the elders told their story, the servants felt very much ashamed, for nothing like this had ever been said about Susanna. The next day, when the people gathered at the house of her husband Joachim, the two elders came, full of their wicked plot, to have Susanna put to death. In the presence of the people they said, "'Send for Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim.' So they sent for her, and she came with her parents, her children, and all her relatives. Now Susanna was a woman of great refinement and beautiful in appearance. As she was veiled, the scoundrels ordered her to be unveiled, so that they might feast their eyes on her beauty. Those who were with her, and all who saw her, were weeping. Then the two elders stood up before the people, and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears she looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, While we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the garden doors, and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who was hiding there came to her and lay with her. We were in a corner of the garden, and when we saw this wickedness we ran to them. Although we saw them embracing, we could not hold the man because he was stronger than we, and he opened the doors and got away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we testify. Because they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. 
You know that these men have given false evidence against me. And now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cry. Just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. All the people turned to him and asked, What is this you are saying? Taking his stand among them, he said, Are you such fools, O Israelites, as to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination and without learning the facts? Return to court, for these men have given false evidence against her. So all the people hurried back, and the rest of the elders said to him, Come, sit among us, and inform us, for God has given you the standing of an elder. Daniel said to them, Separate them far from each other, and I will examine them. When they were separated from each other, he summoned one of them and said to him, You old relic of wicked days, your sins have now come home, which you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent and acquitting the guilty, though the Lord said, You shall not put an innocent and righteous person to death. Now then, if you really saw this woman, tell me this. Under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? He answered, Under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, Very well. This lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God has received the sentence from God, and will immediately cut you in two. Then, putting him to one side, he ordered them to bring the other. And he said to him, You offspring of Canaan, and not of Judah, beauty has beguiled you, and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you have been treating the daughters of Israel, and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree did you catch them being intimate with each other? He answered, Under an evergreen oak. Daniel said to him, Very well. This lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you in two, so as to destroy you both. Then the whole assembly raised a great shout and blessed God, who saves those who hope in him. And they took action against the two elders, because out of their own mouths Daniel had convicted them of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor. Acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. Thus innocent blood was spared that day. Hilkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter Susanna, and so did her husband Joachim and all her relatives, because she was found innocent of a shameful deed. And from that day onward Daniel had a great reputation among the people.